What's up? This is Kong from X-Faders, and in this video, we'll talk about a possible tip that will fix your FX section on the Hercules Impulse 500. But before we jump into the video, I want to give a huge shout out to Zounds for providing this demo unit. So if you're interested in this controller or any other musical instruments or DJing equipment, please check out their website in the description section below. Even though this controller has been out for a little while, and a little while meaning over two years, I would still say this is one of the better entry level DJ controllers out there on the market. But one of the largest disappointments was the implementation of the FX section. So once you activate one of the effects, the filter knob becomes a wet dry, so you lose functionality of a low pass or high pass filter. It's kind of hard to explain, but the best thing I can think of is to actually show you how it works. Now, if you're already familiar with it, you can go ahead and jump ahead in the video. The timestamps are in the description below. So as you can see here, I'm making adjustments to the filter. The high pass filter is being activated now as well as the low pass filter. So I'll go ahead and bring up the Serato interface here so you can get a better idea. The first thing I'll need to do is go ahead and open up the effects section on Serato DJ Pro. Now that is one of the requirements for this whole thing to work, but we'll get into that a little bit more later in the video. So I needed to first activate the repeater effect on the multi effect section under the Serato. As you can see here, I activated that particular effect and I'm changing the, the parameters on the filter knob and it's adjusting the repeater. So I left it at about two o'clock slash three o'clock so you can see, but the minute that I turn off that effect and make an adjustment to the filter, it sort of jumps to where the parameter was last set and then you have to adjust it back to zero. Now, if you don't touch it at all, you won't hear any change in your music. So no filter will be applied. But if it is in that position and you turn the knob just a little bit, it will apply whatever filter setting that's there. So it may potentially cut out your music if it's on high pass or if it's on low pass, it may drown out all your vocals and instruments. So as you can see, it's almost impossible to set a filter as well as an effect unless you're using a multi effect uh, setup in Serato you won't be able to sort of adjust both of those at the same time. Now, the catch 22 is that you need Serato DJ Pro. Um, Serato DJ Lite will not work with this because it will not allow you to remap the buttons on this particular controller. So to reiterate, this controller only comes with Serato DJ Lite and it will not work with it unless you plan on getting a subscription or purchasing a key for Serato DJ Pro. Also, if you prefer to use the controller without vinyl mode, so basically turning the jog wheel into a pitch bender, you can do so. You just need to do it before you load the preset. If you need a little bit more details about that setup, please let me know down in the comment section. I can make another video explaining that. The first thing you'll need to do is click the settings at the top of the screen here, and then switch over to the MIDI tab. You'll see the controller here in the window right below here. You need to click it at least one time, and the option for you to allow remapping will become available. Once you check that box, you'll be able to remap your controller. I would also highly recommend that you save this preset. So if you go down to the bottom and click save as, you'll be able to type in a name to save this preset under. So it can be just Hercules Impulse 500. The advantage to doing it this way is that when you look through the Serato directory, you'll be able to find the XML file for your mapping. So if you need to transfer it to another computer, you can do it very quickly. Once you're satisfied with all the settings in this screen, you can return back to the home screen of Serato by clicking the settings button at the top. The MIDI button is now available at the top of Serato on the left hand side. So once you click that, you can start mapping your controller. I switched the FX section over to single FX mode on each one of the banks. So bank one and bank two, I've set it to one. The three buttons at the top of the controller, which is vinyl, slip, and quantize, are the buttons that we're going to use for the three settings for the multi effects as well as the single effect. We're going to start off by actually clicking the on button for the single bank effect. So once we click it one time, we can tap the vinyl button. It will map directly to the vinyl. Same thing applies for the next button, which is slip and the last button for quantize. You're going to do the same thing for deck two. So hit the on button first. Uh, and sorry, you can't see the buttons behind here, but it's the same on both decks. So now that we have all the effects mapped, we're going to go ahead and switch over to the, uh, potentiometer or the adjustment, the wet dry knob for that uh, effect. So I decided to use the auto loop button, but by using the shift key in the auto loop button, we can access another mapping. So don't worry, it doesn't adjust your auto loop or the standard way it works. But what you also need to do is hit the C button, C as in Charlie, and change it over to relative twos complement. This will allow the, the potentiometer to adjust correctly. We're going to do the same thing for deck two. So once you click on the wet dry button, simply hold the shift key on the controller and rotate that auto loop knob. 
You also need to continue to hit the C button until you get to Relative 2's complement on this deck as well too. So as you can see here, it adjusts properly. By remapping the vinyl in slip, you sort of lose that functionality, but if you just use it as regular vinyl, it won't affect anything. So as you can see here, when I hit vinyl, slip, and quantize, it just activates or either changes the setting for each one of the effects sections. It's important to note that we cannot make any changes to the other parameters, mainly because we don't have enough encoder buttons on the controller. So what I'd advise you to do is just set those manually and they will not change at all. So when you activate them, they'll already be set. If you do use the quantize button, I still have a solution for that where you can use the auto loop knob, continue to hold shift and click in on the auto loop. This will map the quantize button to the click on the auto loop button. Don't worry, this does not make any changes to your auto loop activation. This will simply allow you to activate and deactivate quantize by holding shift and clicking in on the auto loop button. It works on both decks now, so it'll just make things a little bit easier for you. So as you can see here, I'll demonstrate for you. Once you uh, just click the auto loop button by itself, you'll see that it's activating the auto loop and it's not adjusting the quantize button. As you'll see here, I'll also turn the auto loop knob so you can see it'll make adjustments to the auto loop, but it does not affect the breaker effect or the reverb effect without you holding the shift key. The next thing on the list is we actually need to map the FX buttons themselves. So for FX bank one, we're going to select the FX one on the controller for number one on Serato. So just click it one time. Same thing applies for two. So once everything is complete, I've set it up in the vertical orientation. So FX one and three will apply to deck one and FX two and four will apply to deck two. The advantage to doing it this way is that you'll still be allowed to layer your effects, whether you're using one and two or one or two, and your filter will still remain active. So you can turn that knob and still be able to activate the high pass and low pass filter. So if you got all of that taken care of, you are good to go. You can click the MIDI button at the top of your screen to turn off the MIDI configuration page. The only thing that's left to do now is to test it out. I swapped over to the multi effect setting in Serato just so you can see how that works as well too. So as you can see, there's three own buttons for each one of the effects. So same thing happens where you, it corresponds to the vinyl slip and quantize and it will activate each one of those effects. Now for delay and reverb, you will have to manually adjust, but at least for the repeater, you'll be able to use the encoder knob, which is the auto loop to adjust that first one. So I would highly recommend setting your favorite uh, FX to the first bank and then the other two manually setting them to a, a setting that you prefer. Unfortunately, there's just not enough buttons on the controller to be able to do that without having the same effect that we have in the default layout. Now I'll tell you just in case if this happens to you, I did have a little issue where I had lost the control of the filter. It was an easy fix. All I had to do was turn on the MIDI settings again and remap the filter potentiometer. So by clicking on the filter here on the Serato interface and then rotating the filter on the controller, you'll be able to remap that. I'm not sure why it happened, but just in case, if you have this problem, it's an easy fix. So let's start it up again. Uh, I'll go ahead and close out of the MIDI settings uh, once more so we can test out all of the features. So again, if you need to just go up to the top left and click on the MIDI button and you'll be able to close it out. So here I'll be activating the filter as well as the FX. So just then I turned on the breaker uh, FX, but you also need to click the button at the top, which is your vinyl button to turn on that particular effect. So now I can adjust my potentiometer for the high pass, low pass filter and activate FX one, which is the breaker. And as you can see here, it did not make any changes to the filter whatsoever. Um, they're completely independent of each other. So I can turn on the breaker without uh, losing functionality of the filter. I switched it over to the multi effect mode in Serato. So remember you have to activate the vinyl slip and quantize at the top. This will turn on all three of the multi effects. By holding shift, you can adjust the encoder to increase the repeater parameters. So now when I go ahead and hit the effects one button, it turns on the repeater, but I can still adjust the filter. And as you can see here, I'm holding shift and changing the encoder to change the repeater's parameter. So 
So as I mentioned earlier, some of the effects you're gonna have to manually set to what you like. So I turned up the delay uh, manually, and when I activate the effects, you'll hear it. And here I'm just going through some of the settings just so you can see what each one of them does and how it applies. The fact that I'm able to layer it just under effects one is pretty cool. So here I'm jumping over to effects bank two. So same thing applies, hold shift, you can change the encoder. This one is set to single mode, but it's just only set to reverb. So again, the buttons at the top, you're not able to see it because of the Serato overlay, but what they'll do is adjust the settings under FX2 once you tap on the buttons. So again, just demoing that you can still have complete control over the filter and activate uh, FX2 and FX1 at the same time. So don't forget that we actually remapped the quantize button. So if you do find yourself needing to use that feature, you can still hold shift and press in on the auto loop button. It does not affect your auto loop activation at all. It just simply activates your quantize. So here I'm just tapping the hot Q pad one. If I hold shift and click in on auto loop, now it's quantized so it'll only activate in time. Same thing if you wanna turn it off, hold shift, click in, and it will turn off the quantize button. And I'm pretty sure the last thing you were wondering is whether or not the vinyl portion of the platter still works. And I'm pleased to tell you it definitely does. So as you can see here, I can still have complete control of the track. If you find yourself wanting to scratch or do anything else, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, rotating along the outside will still speed up and slow down the track. So it's not like you lose any functionality of it, unless you particularly like to use a uh, slip. So as a final tip, I would like for you to go into settings. You can go to the audio tab. And what you'll do is you'll have the opportunity to choose. I'm sorry, it's actually the DJ preference tab. You will have the option to turn off effects on song load. I think it's important to use this feature just in case so no effects are activated on a new song that's loaded up. And that's pretty much it. You have successfully remapped your Hercules Impulse 500. Hopefully you'll be able to make better use of the effects section as well as the filters. So I know this was a lot of work that you went through to remap your controller, but just in case you feel better with the default settings and you don't want to erase what you've done, you can always go into the settings sections on Serato and you'll have the opportunity to create a new MIDI preset. Now it's very important that you click on the new button first and then rename the MIDI preset to default or whatever you like to name it to. Once you've created it and clicked on it, then you want to hit reset uh, defaults. This will allow you to revert the controller back to its normal settings. Be sure it's very important that you click default first and then click on restore defaults. If you do this over top of the Hercules Impulse 500, you'll basically erase all your settings. I hope this tip was super helpful for you and you're able to get more use out of your Hercules Impulse 500. Please like, share, and subscribe, and check us out on the website at xfaders.com.